Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the second uh, test version of uh, podcasting with uh, me and uh, my brother, uh, my brother Chris. Say hi, Chris. How's it going? Uh, awesome, awesome. We're, uh, we still don't know what we're calling these. Do you, do you, yes, um, have, have with you, you as always is Chris. <laughs> have you have you thought of a, had any thoughts on what we should call this? Um, I I got nothing. Uh, we could call it Movie Bob and the Chippa, like Smokey <laughs> and the Bandit. Yeah, yeah. Or okay. um, I think there were a couple good ones I was reading in the comments. Yeah. Surprise, surprise! Somebody reads the comments. Um, but uh, I think like the Chipmen was one. The Chipmen cast. Eh, it's not bad. Yeah, uh, not the bad. The Bob cast. You see, I would I when I was thinking of doing it on my own very briefly. I, I thought, okay, hey, Bobcast is there, but my my second thought was someone must have that already. That sounds about right. right. And if, and if they don't, I mean, it's the two of us, so it's not really like you know, right? You know, it it, it would seem kind of like arrogant to like call this you know like the Bobcast, and then it's like, oh, but it's it's the you know what I mean? Like that sort of like diminishing the other person on on the line. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Um. I mean, the Chipmen podcast. I mean, I think what you call the Chipmen Brothers is probably okay to start. All right, yeah. So, so like, now, would, would you would you have an issue if I, like, you know, if we used the Movie Bob branding somewhere in there just for, you know, get it, getting it around? Not at all. I mean, I need more people to hear my, my voice. Okay, so, so, yeah. There we go. So, like, so, yeah, maybe, so, you know, Chip, maybe Chipmen Brothers is, uh, is the is the way to go? Just keep it nice and simple. I agree. Yeah is is that now at the point that you don't need the the cute title for a podcast because everyone's kind of got it? I think so. I mean, it kind of it kind of gives you exactly what you're getting, right? I mean, people either buy into listening to us talk like we're talking with no one else around, or uh, or they can go listen to somebody else do the same thing. Right. Yeah. I mean, like car talk didn't have. Like a, like a fancy name, it was just car talk, right? And I mean, they didn't always just talk about cars, so. right? Yeah, it was it was just a it was just a shooting the shit kind of thing <clears throat> with with the two guys. Exactly. Right. So I'm down. That works for me. Yeah. Okay. So well, whatever the hell we call this. Na 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 chipman. Yeah. You see, the thing is, I think if we went with, like, Chipmen, people would think it was either about, like, you know, potato snacks or, like, uh, like microchips or something. I mean, considering they, they think that we're both really, really, really fat and living in our parents' basement, that might work. Yeah, I don't know. This this is a thing that I, that I, I I'm a, I mean, like, look, I've had, my, my show, run, you know, has run video segments that have been taped in and around my house, not just in front of the green screen that... You know, and, show, and in my house as well. Right, yeah, and they show the interior of, of the house and the apartment. So, like, people know that I live in, like, a basement apartment, but, like, people are, like, the, I, I get these, uh, you know, people ra- railing on, on my content on the social media, and a lot of it... The social media. The, on the social media. I'm and, surprised, shouldn't we pluralize that? We're from Boston, right? The social medias? Yeah, yeah, the social like the media. the Calhouns and the Duncans? Ah, uh, the social medias, kid. Yeah, dude guy. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Now, I looked up Fitzy on the Twitters. On the Twitters. On the Twitters. I called up Fitzy and Sully on the Twitters. Oh, man, I sent them down to the Calhouns, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh... <laughs> We we are gonna run that joke out before we figure out what to call the podcast. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, maybe we should make some kind of reference to Boston in the name. You know, we're uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, dude. I don't know. Um, like the North Shore Chipmen's. Uh, who knows? You know, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Is it like do do people recognize what North Shore means? Uh, I mean, I have no idea. Like, out- maybe if. Maybe if they're from Massachusetts. Right, yeah, like, outside Massachusetts, do people recognize that, like, the North Shore specifically refers... Like, it's not the Northern Shore of Boston. You know, no, no, no. It's the upper part of the state that touches the water. So it's, like, Lynn, Saga, Swampskit. 
Park? It's, it's basically the yeah. part of the state where if you drive north, you can't get to New Hampshire and Maine. Right, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you, you end up out near the water. Yeah. Cape Ann, if you will. Right, right. Yeah, so... Uh... Essex County. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, we'll figure out what to call it at some point. Uh, that had had a, a, some decent reactions to the last one. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah, pe- I'm impressed that people actually enjoyed it. Yeah, people seem to uh, to, to to get something out of it, which is hopefully good. they they like the sound of the audio better this time around. I have a microphone now. Yeah, just just to to give you folks some some technical insight into how these things are done, we're we're doing this over Skype, and as it turns out, uh, you know. People get really like. There's a whole lot of laws about recording phone calls. You know, like if you turn on, like you'd think, oh yeah, I can just record a phone call. I'll turn on, like, uh, you know, all of the recording phone call laws were written for like analog dial-up phones. Yes. So, like, if you turn on your cell phone, you can't run your voice recorder and your phone at the same time in order to prevent you from recording phone calls without someone's permission, right? Right. Right, but. So apparently Skype the same way it's actually really hard to properly record a Skype call because you have to get like Skype doesn't just let you do it and I'm running a program that's supposed to be doing it and it doesn't work so the way that you are probably going to ultimately get this audio is I am recording it into just regular recording software on my microphone on my laptop so Chris's voice is going into a very nice microphone on his end and then coming out of my speaker, sounding however it's going to sound, and then back into my microphone next to the speaker. Which I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people commenting on how we can do that better. Yeah, right. Well, because uh, ev- everyone who works in like audio is is like screaming right now, wondering why why in hell we would do that. Well, my, my buddy at work, um, the reason I have this microphone is my buddy at work listened to the podcast and got... 10 minute, ten seconds into it and went rum, shum, ah, shambling around his house finding this headset microphone for me. Well, that's so, very nice of him. Yeah, and um, then I got a ton of comments. Um, one, that they liked the content, and two, that we should just record our audio separate or actually get together. Um, yeah. Which, which would be fine in a perfect world when um, we didn't have lives. Um, so the fact that you're getting to hear this um, and the fact that we're getting to do it makes us both very happy. Yeah, and so uh, um, for now, this is the best way, and we will keep it trying to improve for you, our viewing public. Exactly. Viewing. exactly. Wait a minute, you're not looking at anything except for pictures of us um, for our listening public. <laughs> right. So, uh, so yeah. So now that, that that we've we've thrilled everyone with uh, talk about how we're making and titling this podcast that they're hopefully listening to, let's. Uh, we should probably talk about something that might be interesting to like anyone, right? Exactly. Right now, let, let me or ask else, you: why, well, why else would we be here? Exactly. Exactly. We are we are here to uh, to entertain people. Uh, so what uh, what I wanted to ask you, Chris, because we we don't uh, like last week we talked about like Beauty and the Beast had just come out and uh, yes, you know it was it was around uh, this week uh, had, and, we, and we talked about the snow apocalypse. Yes, which didn't end up really happening that much. No, it was just really fucking heavy. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it was wasn't that. as much of it. It was just really heavy. Well, you know what happened is we had like it snowed a lot, and then it got just warm enough for it to rain, and rained on top of the snow. Which and, is a classic New England snowstorm. Right. Yeah, and then. Uh, and then, then it froze overnight. Yeah, and then it froze overnight again. So that was hellish. Right. So but, if you didn't shovel it, yeah, um, you were you were fucked basically. Yeah. That, that's. That that's just awful. But uh, so we, we had that going. But uh, you know, not not every week will we have seen you know something similar. For example, I just got home from uh, watching the screening, the press screening for work uh, for the Power Rangers movie. I caramba. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it didn't look like it would be. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh... I had some some little semblance of hope, but it is the the wonderful writing team behind the transformers film. So. Yeah, yeah, it's uh you know it, once they've got the big robot stomping around, it's kind of just passably stupid, but like this mm-hmm. is a, a 2 hour and 4 minute movie, which by the way, it's it's the Power Rangers for 2 hours and 4 minutes. You know, this 
this this is an wow. a, this is an adaptation of a TV series that is occasionally on the long side at twenty five minutes an episode. Right when they have less commercials to show that week. Right, yeah. So okay. this this is two two hours four minutes long. They are in their Power Rangers armor and that doing fights and then driving the robots around um, for about 25 minutes at the end of the movie. Isn't that like what you get to once you get to Iron Man 3? That, well, that little screen time for the actual thing you're coming to see? I mean... Well, not, not necessarily. I like Iron Man 3, but... So do I, but you have to earn it. Well, you do, but like Iron Man 3 has other things going on, and also, like, when they do the armor, there's a big finale, there's a bunch of armor stuff in the middle, there's, uh, they, they pulls all the people out of the plane, like, there's a lot of armor well, stuff. The, mo- the movie's fantastic, yeah. but, you know, when you're, when your first gritty reboot of a TV show movie comes out, you normally have the Power Rangers in the Power Rangers film. Right, my, my point is, is that this is a, a, an enthusiastically by-the-numbers origin story for this kind of thing. Like, if you've seen Chronicle, you, you've... And Chronicle did the same thing for, like, 10 million bucks. Yeah, you, you've you seen exactly this movie, uh, but at the end of it, there are the Power Rangers instead of just, like, generic superhero Akira. guys. Akira. Yeah. And it's... You know, once the computer animators are, are directing the movie instead of the director, it's, like, passable. Just kind of like, oh, hey, there's some robots. Like, this isn't... I don't give a shit, but like it's it's like moving around. You know, so do you th- do you think they did all of that and then used that to pitch to find a director? No, no, I, I don't think it's quite exactly that. I mean, like the reality is, if you want to get technical, that a lot of these big movies now, like this, uh, you know, like this phenomenon now where people are looking at how how is it that people are hiring these indie filmmaker guys who do one movie about kids spending the summer in a treehouse and then they get to make uh, Jurassic World or uh, Kong Skull Island. And, All right. Well, but like the thing is, those it takes so much work now to do the big effect sequences. The studio is usually planning out those big effect sequences and talking to the special effects animators and figuring out how that's going to do and roughly what it's going to look like well before they've hired a director. So, like, they haven't done the animation, but it's not like when when you get on board one of these movies, it's not like they suddenly go, hey, you know what I think King Kong should do? The studio has a script. They already know what King Kong's going to do. Right, you just have to guide everything else and attempt to have some sort of control. Right, yeah, these are not necessarily auteur projects. They, they can't be. You know, even in the pre-CGI days, you know, you couldn't get hired onto a movie to direct and then show up on the first day and say, okay, I think all the walls should be blue. They, they already built that set. Yeah. So, it is it is what it is. So, yes, you know, these things are already kind of figured out and hopefully you're going to bring something to it. And in this case, it's... Uh, it's an awful lot of troubled teenagers talking about what um, a production team that's probably closer to our parents' age thinks that a generation like younger than us, than, than like you and I, thinks is like their issues, you know? Oh, good. Because like... So, you... so like um, a uh, whatever they're calling ABC Family now, ver- after school special version... Of um, Power Rangers, sort of, but it's it's trying to be gritty too, like it's oh. it, it's trying really hard to to not be like the the Nickelodeon Saved by the Bell kind of like like it it's not quite like Girl Meets World, okay, but like like it's it's that in level of actual like stuff going on. You Is know, like, it oh, like Secret World of Alex Mack? I don't think anyone remembers what that was. Except for me. <laughs> oh, is that the and, she... appara- and apparently my wife. Wasn't that like, it, it was like Carrie, but she was a detective and she could turn into goo? Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay, alright, yeah. No, um, it, what what this is, is it's a little more like Riverdale, but like the, the show that's on now. Uh-huh. But not... I, to... I have no idea what that is. It, it's, oh, it's, have you not seen this? It's on the CW? 
the CW is still a channel? It is, it is. That's where Supergirl and Flash and everything is on. Oh, oh, right, right, right. No, Riverdale, you tu- tune in and, and look at channel that keeps Kevin Smith employed. Yeah, you have, if you haven't seen Riverdale, well, you know, like Riverdale, what do you think of when you hear the word Riverdale? Oh, this is the, uh, um, this is the, uh, what the, the freaking... Jughead. Yeah, it's it's the it's the Desperate Housewives version of Archie. That's pretty awesome. Is, is the idea? So it's like all of is the. Is it any good? It's not bad. It's like all of the Archie characters are around, but it's like they're all kind of like nasty and sleazy, and there's like murder mysteries, and everyone's a dick. Oh, it's 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 kind of a thing, you know. I don't. I'd watch that. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't realize Archie was still enough of a thing for like the age group that this is aimed at that they'll get why it's funny. Hmm. You know. So, but yeah, that that's an, uh, another thing. No, the Power Rangers thing is like, and we can't get more Firefly. No, no, no. Huh? The, <laughs> yeah, no. What's 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 crazy in this movie is that it's. There's no, like, adult content, adult language, whatever, but, like, all of, like, the reference material stuff for it is supposed to be, like, really, like, dark and gritty. Like, the, I remember, I I kind, I I was, like, five years too old for Power Rangers when it showed up. But our sister was not. Yeah, right, she was really big into it, but I I remembered the, the show, and it was, like, the city they were in was, like, Southern California, and then when they turned into, like, superheroes, it would suddenly be Tokyo. Yes. But it, it always... Well, because, because 75% of their footage was from something else. Yeah, right. It was from Super Sentai shows. But the... Uh... Which is hysterical <laughs> and um, makes me think of how much I love Kung Pao. Yeah, right. <laughs> Kung Pao is awesome. The um, So, but like now in the show, like the town is... It's alternately an impoverished mining town that is also an impoverished fishing village. So, um, so so every so everyone okay, is, I follow. so everyone is really gritty and you know like lonely and angsty and you know everyone talks about how I want to get out and you know life sucks and it's all a lot of like you know Tumblr trending topic stuff. Yep. So like the the nerdy kid now isn't just nerdy. He full out comes on and says, "I'm on the autism spectrum." Okay, all right, N- not okay. Interesting. Like in those exact words. Yeah, he says, "I'm on the spectrum." Sorry. Is his, is his line. Oh, boy. So it's, it's yeah, okay, fine, you know. I mean, at least they're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, they're like, so, oh, like, the, yeah, the, 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 the blue guy is autistic, and the, uh, because they're trying to do, like, the breakfast club. This is their big conceit is that they're not all best friends to begin with. They're, they're all, like, a bunch of kids in detention, and they're, st- they're supposed to all be troubled and fucked up, but, like, this movie's version of troubled and fucked up runs the gamut from... A bully who is in detention for starting a revenge porn scandal. Oh, good. Yeah, a uh, like an asshole jock who like got in a car accident during a prank, and also the gay girl, the uh, the autistic kid, and then some other kid. So like the, the so like, it's like I'm I'm not sure that like revenge porn bully and autism is like the same level of. Like th- th- those are not like the same thing, and you know, like in the the, right. the movie sort of says like, yeah, you're all we're you know they they keep saying yeah we're all kind of fucked up misfits. I'm like no 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 no. A couple of you are fucked up misfits. One of you is just an asshole. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so you know it, at least in like the Breakfast Club, you know it was like oh the asshole jock guy was like abused at home, and you know the goth girl clearly had had some issues. You know, like like there was there like was some more u- to them. yeah, there was some unity here. This it's they there it's still just you know young actors with one definable personality trait. But instead of the nice gymnast, the nice football player, the nice nerd, you know, it's the angsty girl who's got sexual sexuality issues. You know, they they don't. She's supposed to be gay, but they don't like come out and say it. There's like a you having boyfriend trouble. Oh shit! Wait, girlfriend trouble, and then she just kind of like starts whining about how her family doesn't understand her. So it's was all. This, was this thing written in 1998? It's it, it's it's really that bad. It's it's so bad. But uh, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, the point of that was. Well, it sounds like one of those books you'd read about why your child is troubled and here's how to help them. Yeah, it's... but that was written in 1998 by a 
really, really, really rich televangelist that doesn't actually know anything about children. Yeah, it's it's like it's it's a game effort. You know, like it's like I wasn't like a fit. I'm like, oh no, that's a terrible portrayal of someone with autism. Maybe it is. I I don't know, but I wasn't like going like, oh, I'm a fit. Like I'm, I sat there thinking, okay, hey, wow, that's you know, really some, considering that like apparently the producers of the original show like seriously were awful to the guy who played the blue guy because he was gay and they were concerned about having a gay guy on a kids show. I. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Which is so (laughs) like that they've gone from that. I'm not sure I had heard about that happening. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. That's a thing. But uh, the so they to go from that to now we have our movie and there's, uh, you know, and one of the characters we're pretty much, you know, putting uh, putting the lampshade, hanging the lampshade on it and saying, yep, this is our 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 one gay character. You know, that's that's something, you know, none of the Avengers are gay. That we that we know of, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll wait on yeah. Marvel and Disney on that one. Well, but like you know, like Wonder yeah. Woman, Wonder Woman is bisexual in the comics, and frankly, has been pretty much forever. But uh, apparently, they're not even going to bring that up in the movie. Yeah, well, I mean, we we've already talked about all of yeah. that. So so that's so it's some <laughs> so it's something, but it's just weird that the the movie seems to act like you know the kid who is on the autism spectrum, is exactly as, you know, troubled, fucked up, and kind of a pain in the ass as the guy who's in there for crashing his car and the chick who's in there for starting a sexting scandal. Yeah, um, yeah. a few of those things seem like, um, like, I do shitty things, I'm an asshole, and one of them seems like I have brain reasons why I might do some screwed up stuff. And it's not I'm even, not so sure. That and it's not even like screwed thing. up stuff. It's all very contrived as to why he would be there. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's. Well, just... like he has like uh, difficulties paying attention in school, so they put him in detention. Like I, I don't. He he did. I mean, um, this is... I'm trying. Well, oh no, he 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 was doing science stuff and it blew up. So he's in detention. Ah. Yeah. And it's like Saturday ankle bracelet detention. <laughs> Yeah, isn't so, that like, isn't that like where you end up when you're like caught with drugs? Yeah, but like, that, oh that, that that's the thing. It's all it's all very inconsistent because this seems like a pretty big high school, but the town looks like the town in the first Thor. <laughs> yeah, we aren't even sure if they make children around here anymore. Yeah, the the <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, it's okay. Well, we're doing an impoverished mining town. All right, that's kind of a cute, you know, I'll, I'll assume self-aware bit of business to allow a movie based on Super Sentai to still take place mostly in an abandoned quarry. Right. But, you know, also for, like, set design purposes, I guess, it is also a, a fishing village that's not doing so good. All right, so so here's the tried and true question. Yeah. And um, I'm thinking maybe most of the people listening to this might have forgotten or maybe hope to forget. Um, is it worse than the last Power Rangers movie? And I don't mean like they've made like five or six direct video sequels. One of them might have even gone to the theater. But yeah. the one with Ivan Ooze that scared the shit out of our little sister. Uh, you know, I would... Because I... that seemed more like the show, at least as a movie. It wasn't good, yeah. but at least it was trying to be like the show. Well, like there's, there's a contingent of like fans of the Power Rangers like series that don't that that just do not care for the movie at all because it uh because it's like outside of continuity from the series and doesn't use any sentai footage and you know like doesn't really like feel as much but like i i haven't watched that recently but i've like seen a lot of like clips and things of it around and my general sensibility is that it's a better movie than this yeah i could imagine it it, it... It, I don't. I haven't. God, I haven't seen it in a really long time either. But I, I remember it kind of feeling like a lesser Spy Kids movie. Yeah, about that. Like that. You know, I, like 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 man, you're yeah. you're at least at least it's um benign. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's something that I'm sure little kids that really like the show would just go gaga over. Yeah. You know, without without really being offensive to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I I can report that there were exact that like this 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 was a very restless you know if you could check your phones people would be checking their phones kind of screaming. Yeah. Because really nothing. Like happens. like Yogi Bear. 
Yeah, th th this 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 is a nothing happens kind of movie where it's like, okay, we're gonna train you to be the hey, you found the stuff that means you're the Power Rangers. Now we're gonna train you to be the Power Rangers. And and they go through like training montages and you know talking about why they can't turn into the Power Rangers and all, and it goes on and on and on and. You can hear nothing happening in the theater except people who were there with small children. The the there's there was a young kid in the screening who really wanted to know when the Power Rangers were going to show up. That's kind of awesome. He he was he was very frustrated waiting for the the Power Rangers to be there. Once they did, he was he was ecstatic because there's you know colors moving around on the screen. But right. other, otherwise, the only reactions that this, there were two big applause bits in, in this, no, three, I'm sorry, and they're all in the third act. And they are for the theme song briefly kicking up on the soundtrack when the robots are first there. It's not like an, an Avicii or a, uh, oh, whatever, um, remix of the soundtrack, is it? Because I, I just, I can't wait. No, I think I, I think it's the same cut of the of the theme song from the uh, from the original movie. Okay, so it's not like like dubstep theme song. No, no, it's that the rest of it just sounds like very generic uh, Brian Tyler music. It's either okay. it's either Brian Tyler or Tyler Bates the the. Uh, or Tony Tellerico. No, no, the from, <laughs> from um, Tenchu Stealth Assassins video game day. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't know where my brain went with that. That's okay, man. That's okay. No. Oh, um, there was big applause when, uh, oh, there's a, a cameo of people standing around where their, whichever actors from the original cast wanted to show up are there, and everybody went, oh my god, and there's big applause, and then there's a, a tease for the next movie, which, you know, you can see coming a mile away. Uh, you know, in the mid credits, and everyone went, "Yeah, I told you." It's like, "Yeah, no shit, you told them." What what else would they be teasing? Yeah, we were not blowing that here. I take it. <laughs> oh no, I can, no, 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 they're no, they they no. The detention teacher calls out another name, and it's the name of the fucking green guy who was the oh, the, the popular yeah, okay. guy from the show. So it was like, the "Oh green yeah," slash white ranger when the they ran out of um <laughs> yeah when they ran out of green. From the uh, original show. Yeah, right. Is yeah, it? so that's yeah. So surprising. Now, Go ahead. You had told me. You had told me um, to to lead you to something for a minute. Yeah. That you recently went back to the TV show because they had brought back some characters from the original as like older the, the bullies. Well, They've been telling me how cool that was. Yeah. Well, for like a like an interesting continuity breach. <laughs> Yeah, well, what here? Here's the thing of this is is that in in order to do my due diligence to uh, to to keep abreast of all that is going on in nerd culture, because I'm apparently this is going to be the job for me for a while, which means that uh, eventually now I have to like focus on you know the nostalgia market stuff that is not my nostalgia. Right. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, my uh, my. Well, you can just talk about rest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could. I could also talk about wrestling. Yeah. My my colleague uh, Lewis Lovehog, who uh, um, does videos under the name Linkara, uh, is the biggest Power Rangers fan that I know. Period. And he he does a uh, a, a recurring series where he uh, recaps the series, like season by season. So uh, wow. I've, been, I've been able to catch. That, that's quite a. Um undertaking it is it is um you know especially because the show is still fucking on which uh, it still impresses me every time i hear it which which i which again i find out watching his show is that this series not only is still on but has maintained a rough continuity in itself so so that even like, though it's stitching together what some 15 different iterations of the Japanese show. I think at this point it's like 20. Oh my god. Well because like Sentai is is like like 60 years old in Japan. Like this hey, is I, I mean that it was impressive in like the, the early to mid 90s when it was first on when the quality would go from like Nickelodeon after school special so it was at least like clean looking yeah. to like blippy bloppy old footage 
um, from the 70s that, yeah. uh, <laughs> that yeah. had really, really bad coloring and lighting because they may have been recording off a projector on a wall. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's quite a it's quite a thing. So, so yeah, so uh, supposedly the uh, the two guys who and th- this this is you know one of like the things that I do remember about this was the uh, the 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 comic relief bully got Balkan Skull. There from, we go from yeah. the original. Are, are they in this new movie? By the way, they are not. There is no uh, Balkan Skull character. There's there's a bully who is around who like is there to pick on the nerdy kid so that the jock kid can hit him so that we know that he's the good jock kid? Ah, uh, yes, good jock. Right, but but he's only one guy, and they, they don't ever say his name, so I, I don't think he is Bulk or Skull. Interesting. We'll probably bring them into the next one, kind of like a Bebop Rocksteady kind of thing. I, I would imagine so, and the thing is, this movie is really missing uh, comedy. Yeah. <laughs> It is like it. It's really hurting for funny things happening in this movie, uh, you know, because dour and serious is what I think of when I think of rainbow-colored people doing gymnastic kung fu against, uh, you know, monsters and such. Well, I mean, Bob, they really should have kept the seriousness of the big bad beetle forks. Yeah, thing. yeah. You know, yeah. leave leave the gritty yeah. to the original gritty. Yeah, beetle forks. Keep keep that. Right. No, the the you know this will be. The, the R-rated VR Troopers movie will be there. The R-rated VR Troopers. The, the spin-off in from that one. Although that was, like, the more violent Power Rangers, because that was in syndication, so they left in, like, the, you know, the connecting hits and the monster blood from the Japanese footage. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so in any case, yeah, the, the guys who... Up, I come to learn, you know, educating myself about the Power Rangers is that the guys who played Bulk and Skull were not, like, professional actors. They, like, knew people working on the show and got in. One of them is a doctor. Interesting. One, one of them went They were, out, like, the Clint Howard of the Power Rangers? Sort, that... sort of, yeah, because... one And, like, they stayed on the show longer than any of the original cast did. Right, so they were like the continuity keepers. Yeah, for a long time they were, even when the show went to space and then came back from space. But uh, they, uh, they, one of them was a doctor. The other one basically, like, worked himself up into the company that makes Power Rangers, and he's, like, directed a bunch of it and has, like, written parts of it. <laughs> Someone writes it. Yeah, and is now ve- and is now very involved in in this thing. And they've brought the characters back a couple of times now as like you know the elder statesman of of this franchise. Which uh, which apparently which apparently is a is a big is a big deal. But yeah, so <laughs> ironically enough, we just did about thirty five minutes on that, and the lead into that was that we couldn't talk that much about Power Rangers because only one of us had seen it. Yeah, it's it's interesting how that works. It is. It is. What one thing I it is like we're in the same mind. It is. Man. We we are one mind. We are trapper keeper. <laughs> we are one. Yeah, we've got like we got like some Bill and Ted shit going on. Interesting. Don't forget to wind your watch. <laughs> That's such a good fucking movie. It is a fucking great movie. Bill... Now that is something we could talk about. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll. we'll, we'll... Next time we'll, come, we'll 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 do a Bill and Ted uh, cast because I want because uh, apparently Chris the way that you're supposed to do the podcast game app- apparently the way this is supposed to work is you put it up and then you see what people liked that you talked about and then you try to give them more of that. Ah, right. okay. Yeah, you try you try to do that. So uh, I was I was hoping to only talk about the things they didn't like. So if it right now you could make my mic get really shitty. <laughs> I think we'll make um, everybody really, really, really happy. Um, also, if you could redub my voice with your voice, it seems a lot of people think we're the same person. Yeah, I don't think so, we. I don't think we sound all that similar. Uh, I mean, we we could come up with alternative voices, right? Well, we could. I mean, I've got like more of a uh, of, of like a New Englander accent than you do, but I kind of Sometimes, always. Have... I think when you get mad, you get yeah. Like, like if we were talking about pixels, for instance, oh my all God. the R's drop away, and ugh, vulgarity comes back. Yeah, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to hear from pixels. I don't want to know about it. It's uh, that's the... all I could think about when people were saying they needed us to sound like we had 
more of a Boston accent was to do the whole thing like the two freaking guys that thought they were catching a wheel. Oh, a baby whale! Dude, Jay, this thing's a baby fucking wheel, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We won't we won't do the whole impression here because you know everyone who knows us is sick of it. But uh, you know, <laughs> you, can, you, you you can go look up Boston tuna on uh, yes, on 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 pretty, on the YouTube. It's fucking great. Where the two guys think they're it's it's just a mola mola, but they think they've discovered an interesting species of fish, and it's uh, quite quite a thing. But uh, what? Anyway, what, I think you were going somewhere I, with that lead. In. I was eventually going somewhere. Um, pe- people really responded to us talking about The Simpsons. Interesting. See, yeah, now, I've never seen that show. <laughs> now here's here's what is what interests me about the talking about The Simpsons is every is that like the when I say and when I say everyone I just mean the internet. The internet. The the internet of of people. Um. The Simpsons is like an evergreen popular thing. You can always talk about it. You can always do Simpsons episodes, Simpsons podcasts, Simpsons art, memes, whatever. But everyone also seems to agree that the show not only isn't good anymore, but hasn't been good for about like uh, tw- almost 20 years. None of them have seen the Lego episode then. Right, yeah. Now, so this is what I wanted to talk about because now, like, you, you... You are someone who still watches The Simpsons, right? Um, not as much as I used to, um, but only because of lack of watching much TV at all. But I still try to catch a couple episodes a season, and um, I still think it it every once in a while catches that glory. I think I think the post South Park Family Guy world kind of I wouldn't say ruined The Simpsons for people, but it kind of stayed in the same place. I think any time The Simpsons goes bad is when it tries to hit the edgy um, direction those shows are in. Because the only time The Simpsons was really edgy was when you and I were in Catholic school, and we were basically told it was the devil, and we were banned from watching it when I was in first grade, and you were in fourth grade. Yeah. Right? I mean, they, they actually had to have meetings at the school with the parents telling them that we weren't allowed to talk about The Simpsons, um, even though everybody and their mother was watching it. And what's funny is this was around the same time that In Living Color was on. And you'd think that they'd worry more about the kids dropping fire marshal bill bits in the middle of school. But they didn't seem to care about that. It was the cartoon. Well, because cartoon. Car- well, because cartoons were not supposed to... Because it was like this was the first primetime cartoon in forever. And, you know, this is the other thing. Is The Simpsons very much owns itself at, like, when it started out... You know, it did not try to appeal to kids. It was aiming at, you know, grown-ups. It was doing sitcom storylines. Pretty much still is. But, like, I don't know anyone who really loves The Simpsons who started watching it as an adult. Right. You know, like, I Right, know... no, that's 100% right. I mean, I, I mean, our parents liked it when we watched it when it was on, but I don't I don't know of anyone in their age group that I still watch it. Yeah, the, or, or no, the, they watched the, it because their kids watched it. Yeah, like the the Simpsons did catch on because oh, it's a cartoon, so it's on in prime time, and kids were watching prime time TV anyway. So so why the hell not watch it, right? Right. And that's fine. It's fun, and uh, and I think the Simpsons is great. What I honestly think is that when when people talk about when the Simpsons was great, like this is the usual run that you hear from people is. And you know you can stop me if you know if you know this, but like you know when people talk about like the the golden age of the Simpsons, you know they're talking they they claim to be talking about seasons three through eight. Right, and I mean it, going back through the DVDs, I mean that's that's freaking gold. Yeah, they're, they're not they're, they're I mean that's better than most television that's ever been on TV. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but what what occurs to me is that. The, the seasons three through eight, if it is true that the, the main audience that, you know, loves and, and or has strong opinions about The Simpsons are all people who started watching it as kids, that yes. seasons three through eight, eight pretty much represents when they were in grade school and in high school. Prime, yes. prime, prime time television cartoon watching. And that, you know, the, the the supposed downturn of episodes after that is all about, 
you know, seasons nine onwards up through season like 20, 27, I think we're in now. I think that's right. Yeah. So to me, it feels like it's skewed because of that, that the Simpsons quote unquote got bad right around the same time that the audience for it, you know, was, you know, going towards more college age programming and also not necessarily watching TV on Sunday night. Right. So now you, do you, I mean, they out, you, you could argue that they out, that they outgrew it a little bit and it yeah. kind of stayed the course. Well, right. Well, and also, like, the Simpsons stayed as exactly what it was because there hadn't been for a long time until that showed up a situation comedy that didn't have to worry about anyone getting older or dying. So it stayed exactly what it was for much long. Like, a normal sitcom if that was regularly on TV, would eventually have evolved into a different show around season six when Bart turned 15. Right, they would have, or they would have had to have him and Lisa turn 18, 19, 20, or have one of them have a kid really young right. to, give, to give the parents something to do. I mean, think about it, the death knell of most television shows of that era, right? I mean, you talk about Roseanne, you talk about Married with Children, you talk about The Cosby Show. It's usually when the next generation of kids show up and the show decides that they need to bring in like some full house style after schooly things yeah, right. with the younger kids where yeah. they start getting shaky. Yeah, when the when the, right. yeah, when the kids are no longer cute like the Cosby show, you know, like uh, I know awful example because, you know, the Cosby show is this is is this thing it's it's like the OJ thing where the Cosby show is this huge thing that happened and now we have to kind of like, you know, Right, we can't, we can't, we can't admit that it was actually a good show. It's sullied. Well, it's sullied. <laughs> well, well, also, it's it's sullied, and you know everything around it just feels sleazy and dirty now. And I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. And but like the for like the Cosby Show, you could track the trajectory of when that show kind of knew it was on the way out when uh, you know Rudy got too old and uh, they had to bring in the new cute daughter. Yes. Yeah, so they had to have a new kind of thing going on. The Simpsons never had that problem. Now, so, as you mentioned before, you still watch The Simpsons, you still enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. And when you watch it, I will will admit there's times where I watch it and I go, it's almost, I mean, what, 27 seasons, whatever we said. Eventually, you're going to have to redo storylines, you're going to have to revisit material. I mean, we could admit that in the time period that Futurama was on, the show took a hit from not having writers, right? They were splitting people, Mm -hmm. right, between shows. Um, But, I mean, I I cite, I mean, I said it earlier, you know, in the big uplift of the the Lego movie, they did that Lego Simpsons episode, and that episode feels like it belongs at least at the end of that golden age of seasons of that show. Yeah. It it felt like it was written different. It got the characters better Mm -hmm. than a lot of more recent stuff did. Yeah. It gave, like, centric stories for each of the characters to kind of do old-fashioned, winky Simpsons things that I think sometimes the show loses in the more recent seasons. Yeah. Now, so, like, if you, it, like, you know, the reruns run in, like, blocks basically every day on FXS. When you turn one of those on, if you're around and that's on, you know, and you see, like, a season 20 episode or a season 15 episode, chances are it's good. Yeah, no, and, and the ones I've missed, I find with a little bit of distance from them going back, it's like I don't really know what people were talking about yeah. season 23 being dog shit. Yeah, you know, well, you go back and you see an episode from it, and you're like, whoa, wait a minute, maybe in the context of what else was on when this was on, yeah, um, it might have not as had as big of an impact. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that the show, the show used to be the it thing. Yeah. Right, the thing... You were you came to school on Monday morning and people were talking about The Simpsons. Yeah. Right? You left school on Friday and your friends were either talking about what was going to be on SNCC that night or, you know, on Saturday night or on TGIF, you know, what freaking Urkel was going to do tonight. Yeah. You know, or whatever that. Or they were going to say, I can't wait for The Simpsons because it's the Halloween episode on Sunday. You know, or, exactly. or whatever it is. And I mean, the Halloween episodes are still freaking great. They are. I mean, they've... Con- They've consistently always felt like they were a completely different show. Yeah. The art style is different. The writing is is more ballsy. Um, you know, they often hit higher... They often hit into shorter shorter lengths of storylines, higher concept references than a lot of the rest of the seasons. 
I, I forget. I don't have it in front of me to remember. When was the the Monty Burns who shot Jr. thing? Was that in the season eight nine era? It was. It was. Or is that like just post that? Because that, I mean, that was something that even parents were talking about, right? I mean, they had us all hooked. Yeah. No. Yeah. Who shot Mr. Burns was huge, and that was uh, yeah. That was season six. I mean, they even had like at Seven Eleven, which we didn't even have around here at the time, because it was more of a Midwest thing. Right, I mean, we we had um, the White Hen, right, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and and Little Peach. You know, they're all Seven Elevens now. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Simpsons is always tied into Seven Eleven, right? The um, when the Simpsons movie came out, Seven Elevens all became Quickie Marts, right? And it was it was cute and clever because that's yeah. what Quickie Mart is, right? Um, but the um, you could go and get like you know, remember the little red like. Um, a little red contorted, you couldn't read them like puzzles, and then you grab like the red thing and put it over it, and you could read it. They had like clues you could get to figure out who shot Mr. Burns. Yeah, it was like a promo, and I remember that like that was so damn cool. <laughs> and I mean, and there were parents going out and buying this stuff, right? This wasn't just they're bringing their little kid, like that was huge, right? Um, I mean, it, I, I do kind of think that. Right around the time the Simpsons movie came out, because the Simpsons movie, and I'm sure they'll get a lot of comments on this, but the Simpsons movie is fucking great. Yeah. Um, it it both feels like its own thing. It revisited a lot of storylines, but it it it's it, it's its own thing, and it's also entirely a great culmination of the Simpsons. Yeah. Right. And I still think Graining should have ended it with the movie like Plane. But, you know, that was all. I don't think I don't think we've gotten good content after that. Yeah. But it would have been good to hold off on doing that book this really dumb show. Yeah. Because well, it would have gone on in the high note. Well, you remember, so, um, this is something that I didn't know for a long time, was there's a the season, like, I think three or four episodes. Remember at Camp Krusty? Yeah, it's one of the absolute greatest episodes. Yeah. Uh, at Mr. One, Black. Right. At one point, that was supposed to be the Simpsons movie. No shit. Yeah, that was like when, when they were really hot to do a movie at one point. They said, hey, you guys should do a movie-length episode, and the pitch that they made was Bart and Lisa go off to camp and have, like, a camp adventure, and then stuff happens to the Simpsons back home, and they ultimately didn't make a movie, but, you know, they, they made a show, but that was the pitch for the Simpsons movie for, for a while. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, they've also, they've planned to end the show at least twice before, um, to have like a lat, like they've written episodes that were supposed to be the last episode in case it didn't get renewed. And, uh, the, the most recent one was Holidays of Future Past. Oh, yes. Which, uh, which you, you know, you've seen that one, right? It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, that's the, the, it's the, the Christmas one. They do the flash well, for ahead. anyone that shits on that show, that's, the, that's one you just have to show. It's like, if the, you, if you don't think they've still got it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there was so much going on in that freaking episode. Right, well, but, and even that, I think Holidays of Future Past is, like, uh, at least ten years old now. But, it, I mean, it's still in, like, the seasons 15 plus. Yeah. It feels new to me. Well, okay, um, but, it's, it's but six. But that's what I like yeah. about this show. It's it's six years old. I mean, that was good, and you can see that that was designed as this will be the final episode of the show, because it does tie off a bunch of, uh, Loose ends. It's the uh, it's the only one of the prospective future episodes that they haven't declared officially non-canon. Ah, uh, because they've done like a because all the other future episodes are possible futures, right? Where, whereas this one is, uh, you know, feels it, it was meant. It feels more like okay, this is this is the real future of these characters. Like if they if they were to to have one, I would say yeah, this should be this should be the real future for them. But here's. It, it, an interesting thing, you know, we're talking about how long this show has been on. Yeah. Because, I mean, the show came out in 89. Uh-huh. So I was four, five years old. Right, right? yeah. Um, you were eight, right? I mean, we, this show, I mean, this is pre-internet, for Christ's sakes, right? Um, and definitely pre what the internet is today, pre even what geek culture is today. Mm-hmm. When we were kids, you couldn't find you couldn't find swag. You couldn't find action figures. You could maybe get a T-shirt, but they were never official. It was like bootleg stuff with Bart's face on them, you know, and all this. Remember, there were a couple runs, and they might have even been like Happy Meal toys or something that was short run. But the early stigma was people had a hard time 
you know, um, making this be a kid's thing, right? It was, it was even, you know, Batman Returns had just been the big, like, clusterfuck that it was at Burger King for having kids' toys and stuff for a movie that was essentially rated R. Right, yeah. No, it wasn't, but it should have been, right? So... <laughs> We lived during that, right? Where they were like, I'm not really sure if we want Bart Simpson showing up and being like up on stage, like singing at like a kids' television event, you know. Whereas now, you know, they'd be at the freaking Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, for Christ's sake. But um, we really had to wait to be teenagers. Teenagers before you could buy Simpsons action figures. You know, it, the culture of like paraphernalia changed while this show was around. You know what I mean? That I mean now geek culture. We, we have action figures everywhere. You know what I mean? We have we have all. I mean the DVD boxes looking like the shape of faces, which they don't even release them on DVD anymore. It's fucking obnoxious. Yeah. But um, you know, it, it was just interesting that it, like this was really a in a time period where it was passed along by word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Like I think what was the like most important Simpsons thing you could buy that they actually released the Simpsons Sing the Blues cassette tape. Oh, and for a while there was the the like the Bart dolls that talked. But the, even the Bart dolls that talked were like a like mid nineties thing. Yeah. It wasn't like a nineteen ninety one thing. Yeah, you're right. You know, like it, for a while that was like an impossible to find thing. Yeah, like the most the I think the number one piece of Simpsons merchandise for a long time. Uh, you know, because and then after that they were on everything. They were on T shirts and like T shirts right. were the big thing. But, like, was the arcade game. Yes. Yes. Oh, which, that wonderful arcade game. Which was fantastic. I should, yeah. I, I should plug my 360 back in just for, for that, because that was on that Xbox Live Arcade. The night we downloaded that on 360 and played through it about three times? Yeah. It was... I mean, you go right back to Fun Spot. Hell no, you don't even go right back to Fun Spot. You go back to um, Roller World. Oh, Lord, yeah. You know what I mean? At Salem Willows. Um, you mm. go back to uh, you go back to Prince Pizza when they had the Ninja Turtles and Simpsons arcade boxes in the back. Mm-hmm. Local references, but you know, I mean, this is <laughs> yeah, yeah. this show. This show isn't like childhood nostalgia. This is lifetime nostalgia. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, and that's that's why I you know I find the cynicism of growing up and saying that The Simpsons is dead or The Simpsons has outlived its prime. I mean, okay, maybe it's been on its greatest hits tour for the last 15 years or, like, whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, it's still our Simpsons, man. Uh, yeah, it you is. Know? Yeah. Now, let me ask you, because do you know which... Are you aware that there are there's a consensus among really overly devoted Simpsons fans of when the show stopped being good. Like, they've got it down to one episode. I, um, I'm not aware. Is it the Ivan Etniage episode? Because that's one of the annoying ones. The, the, the party posse? Join the Navy. It, that, that's a funny episode, though. I, I've always found that one to be annoying in my head. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, that's, no, that's good. That is a, uh, that is actually a season... Uh, hold on. Where 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 is the the season number on? The, I've got the thing open right here. This is uh the that that's season twelve. So it's after the point when we're supposed to think that the show stopped being good. Yeah, I I should like. What was the episode? What was the episode they pinpointed? I need to hear this. The principal and the popper. Really? Yeah. Right. Season nine, episode two, the principal and the popper. I, I don't remember that one being terrible. What was the, what was the, gist of this episode again? This is uh, Armin Tenzarian. That's good shit. Yeah, yeah. This is this is when this is the one where that's that's where they draw the line. Well, where Mark, well, because according to overly devoted Simpsons fanatics, this is the one where. We find out Principal Skinner was not, is not actually Principal Skinner; that he's actually a completely different guy, and he assumed yeah. Then they met the, in the re- war and assumed the yeah role yeah, and then he came home and, and took over that guy's life because in his honor because he died, and then the real guy comes back and it's Martin Sheen. 
Yeah. Yeah. You see, I always thought this was a funny episode. Now, like, the thing is, when this first aired, it bugged the... Sh- it, like, the premise of it bugged the shit out of me. Because... And this was 1997, so I was 16. Yeah. Right? So, it bugged the shit out of me because... You know, I was thinking, hey, come on, no, I've I've built up an idea of who Principal Skinner is in my head, and you're you're messing with my continuity and the continuum of, you know, what, what the storyline of The Simpsons is. And Isn't that what makes it great? Well, yeah, well that's the thing, is that like The Simpsons from the beginning has never cared about episode to episode continuity because it ran like a it, it was an analog era sitcom where you maybe you'll be in reruns someday. Uh, you know, there was no consideration of DVD and no consideration of trying to keep a consistent one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three continuity through all of these things. And like the whole joke of this episode is using that to make fun of the fact that TV sitcoms always reset to zero no matter what. Right. Because the payoff to the episode is that everyone decides that uh, they would like things to go back the way they were, and then they get the judge to declare that that guy is not Seymour Skinner. They've only ever mentioned it like two, like one or two more well, they, times. They mention it in winky ways. They'll always yeah. say like they'll, they'll they'll mess with the name, and like Skinner will give like a wink or something like that. Yeah. I, I think it's clever. It is, and like it's not. A, it, it's actually a very funny episode. There's a lot of good gags in there. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure we, we could generate a list of episodes that are yeah. worse than that. Well, <laughs> no, no, but here's the thing, though. This is Season 9, and this was the second episode of Season 9. Yes. Now, these are... Now, right before this is... This this is an odd fact, is that the, the opening episode of that season was uh, uh, an episode that for a while they didn't air. One of the few episodes that basically went out of circulation. The, the City of New York versus Homer Simpson. Okay. Which you remember is the one when Homer, uh, that Barney took takes Homer's car and parks it at the World Trade Center, and the Simpsons are in New York, and everyone else yeah. has a good time, and it sucks. For, like that's a great episode, but they stopped airing it because the whole thing is based around the two towers, and for a while that was depressing. Right. Yeah. Well, and it has the line where the guy says, "Don't listen to him. They put all the jerks in Tower Two. Yeah. No. Uh- that would make sense as to why you don't want that on TV. Right, okay, uh. so so the principal and the pop are heirs supposedly killing the Simpsons forever. Yeah, that that's that's when it yeah. happened. Right. So right after that, <laughs> right after that, the episode let, let's look at these episodes right after this. Le- the origin of Lisa's saxophone. Fucking great. Right, good episode. Treehouse of Horror eight uh eight, thirteen. Yikes. Which had the Omega Man, The Fly, and uh, Easy Bake Coven when Marge was a witch. Yeah. Worth it for the Omega Man alone. Right. It, a lesser year of that, but none of them are terrible. Right. They're just, none of them are, the Omega Man is, is good. But. Yeah, right, that, that, was, that was good. Um, the Cartridge Family, that's uh, Homer Joins the NRA. All right, yep. Uh, Bart Star, that's uh, when Bart plays Pee Wee football. That one's not great. No, that's see, I'd put that below Arm and Ten's area. Yeah, it's it's just kind of a generic episode. It's filler. Yeah, it's the first King of the Hill cameo in The Simpsons. That's interesting. There you go. I mean, Mike Judge showing up in The Simpsons is always a great thing. I mean, we should do another episode of this in King of the Hill. Yeah. Holy shit! King of the Hill is uh, is is quite a uh, quite a thing. King of the Hill is way too introspective. It's like the the best things Kevin Smith has ever done, but about Mike Judge and that part of our country. And it gets, I mean, you, it just it gets dark. That show. <laughs> Cotton is a very dark character in and of itself. He anyway, is. He really back, is. Back to the Simpsons. Yeah. Uh, oh, the the next episode after that was the two Mrs. Nahasapima Petalons. Uh huh. So when Apu gets married, great one. Apu episodes are always fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Lisa the Skeptic, when Lisa's an atheist. Yeah, they, they stuck with that for a bit. Yeah, with, uh, with they, the... They went back to that episode a lot. Yeah, that's the one with the angel. Yeah. Yeah, like, Lisa's an atheist in this one, and then later she's a... Bo- so that they hadn't even gotten to Buddhist Lisa yet, but supposedly right. the show is dead. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, oh, Reality Bites. Uh, Realty Bites, when Marge was a realtor. Not like a wonderful episode, but an okay one. Yeah. I'm remembering the season quite vividly now. Yeah. yeah. Lionel Hutz is in that one. Phil, th there is... The Simpsons cannot possibly have died before Phil Hartman did. That's 100% true. Right. And you're, you're all heretics if yeah. you say otherwise. M Miracle on Evergreen Terrace, the woman Bart destroys the Christmas presents by accident and he hides the evidence. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, a dark... You see, that I didn't realize it until rewatching it. That's why Holidays of Future Past would have been the perfect finale if they'd done it, because it would have begun and ended on a Christmas special. Right. That's that's poignant. Uh, all singing, all dancing. Uh, Was that the... Um, the musical episode. Uh, I think I'll throw a Bricky Mart. Uh, no, that that's... The Bricky uh, Mart is so dull. Well, no, <laughs> that's, the all singing, all dancing is the... the it's it's the clip show of musical episodes. Oh, okay, so that one would have been featured in that. Yeah, so it would have been in there, and that uh, that has uh, the uh, the 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 paint your wagon parody. Yeah. <laughs> Bart Carney, the one with uh, uh, Jim Varney when the the Carneys move into the house. Yeah. Not yep. like, not not the best, but but a funny one. Oh, the the joy of sex, the movementarians episode when they join the cult. Yep. Das Bus, when they the the, kid, the school bus uh, goes to the desert island, <laughs> and it's uh, Lord of the Flies. That was freaking good. Right, the Last Temptation of Crust. Was that the one with his dad? Uh, it's one. Of, I I believe it's one of the ones with his dad. No, this is the one when uh, when Krusty gets depressed about his act no longer being good and fakes his death. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, oh, no, wait, no, I have that, I have that wrong, I have that wrong. The Last Temptation of Crust is the one when Krusty, uh, quits because his act is, is hacky, and then he turns into, like, a George Carlin-style cynical comic. Oh, yes. And, uh, he, he tells everyone to burn, like, their wallets at the show. <laughs> Don't you hate pants? Where was, where, in continuity, or in what season, was the Krusty comedy classic? K K, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, also the like, choo choo choose you episode. Oh yeah, that well that that was that was back in in classic zone. That's like season okay. six or seven with that uh, with with Ralph. Uh, oh, dumbbell identity. Uh, that that was uh, that was the one when uh, Homer goes to jail. Oh, Mo is dating the hot chick, and uh, is desperate for money. What was that, Bob? Oh, uh, the, the, the next episode... Sorry, my after... headset, like, dropped out for a second there. Oh, I'm sorry. The next episode after that, Dumbbell Indemnity. Yeah, what was, what was that one? That's when Mo is dating Helen Hunt, or, like, not Helen Hunt, but she's the voice of the character, and he's, like, that that's uh, Bring Me Your Finest Food Stuff With Your Second Finest. Oh, yes, Lobster Stuff With Tacos. Right, another, like, that that right there makes that episode a classic. Oh, and it's when Homer, he, he tries to roll the car down the hill to fake his death, and then rolls out the door, and then rolls down the hill and back into the car. <laughs> they, anytime they do a Homer falling down a hill gag, mm. I mean, like, the Bart jumping over Springfield Gorge. Yeah. You know, all that, they're always fantastic. <laughs> did, did you get a little choked up in the movie when they went over Springfield Gorge and didn't acknowledge yeah. it? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Yeah. That movie has a lot of moments like that. Yeah. Like they don't, um, they don't even bring up that that's what's going on. But it's like, wow, okay, they both made it over. Yeah, yeah. It's, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lisa, Lisa the Simpson was was after that. The one when Lisa is uh, believes that she's going to go stupid like the rest of the family, and it turns out it only happens to the men. Yeah, yeah. I play a millionaire at parties, or at least I like to. <laughs> Oh, this little wiggy when uh, when Mar Marge makes Bart play with Ralph. Yes, that's that. Oh, that that has uh, that's where I see the leprechaun. He tells me to burn things. <laughs> I see Snagglepuss out in the schoolyard. Really, Al? He was going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you kids and Daddy's forbidden closet of mystery? <laughs> Oh, so many good ones. All um, of these, all of these after the supposed death of the Simpsons in the same right. season. Simpson. There was, 
I, I will never call episodes involving Cletus the slack jawed yokel some of the best. Yeah. Um, because they often are a little weird. But it is weird that they have continuity now, though. Like the show didn't used to have continuity, yeah. and now brings it up. Like, uh, like Elon Musk showed up and like changed the power plant in one episode, like two seasons ago, and it still gets mentioned as a reason why Mister Burns has to do things. <laughs> is is that 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 because Elon Musk did stuff to the plant? That's awesome. Yeah, but uh, yeah, or or that like uh, they've gone back to Bart. Uh, dating Cletus's daughter, like a couple really? of times. Yeah, uh, the 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 Spuckler girl. And uh, they, like they've they've returned to the theme of them having been a couple because like the, even though Bart is still supposed to be about ten years old, the show pretty much writes him and Lisa as teenagers when the episode suits it. Right. Like they they do a lot of episode runners, like you know back and forth gags like. Like, that Millhouse has a crush on Lisa has been a thing for a long time. And it's all just kind of right. look, looked the other way, that this is, like, a 10 to 11-year-old with a crush on, you know, who who must be, like, an 8-year-old. You know, but they're cartoons, so who cares? For those of you who uh, notice a jump there, um, the uh, the Skype uh, briefly cut out, which might, that, that might be life telling us to wrap it. It could be yes. It it could be, but yeah, no. We were we were on about uh, this the, how the uh, they've gone back to Bart dating Cletus's daughter a few times. Right. Oh no, I, I've wanted to end it on that. I don't remember what season it was from, but there was an episode. Uh, food was it? Lisa and Marge got into a foodie thing, and and there ended up being a meth lab involved. Oh yeah, do you yeah. Remember this one? Yes, and I do. Just had one of my favorite gags with the slack jawed yokels. Which, uh, you know, um, you know, the ring uh, gets busted and Homer, you know, like sells out the like meth ring or whatever. And they're getting carried away by the, the police. And Cletus and his family are standing out there dressed in like their version of their Sunday's best. It's like, oh, man, that was our favorite Sunday meth lab. <laughs> I don't know why, but that line always kills me. I don't remember what season it's from. I'm, I don't know. Did you did you do the the last season's finale, the the yellow badge of courage? No, I didn't see that. Look, look this up. On the, it's the one. It's uh, Bart. Um, they they're running a race around the school to celebrate the start of summer. Yep. Because like Bart is graduating for the the like twentieth time or so that they've done this storyline, and uh, they they run a, a a lap race and Milhouse has been secretly training himself to run. And he's doing good, and to fix the race, the bullies have Milhouse beaten up, and Bart sees it and doesn't say anything. Interesting. And gets named the winner. But the uh, there's a a the the B story in this one is that Homer wants to bring back the Springfield Fourth of July fireworks display. Right. And he so they they have to go and buy illegal fireworks from Cletus. <laughs> and he that sounds asks, great. And they they sell them. Uh, the, the fireworks aren't full of gunpowder. And they say, what, but, is, what is this What is this full of? This is full of crystal meth. And then he's like, <laughs> wait, it is? Well, then what did I sell to them Mexicans? And then a like a mushroom cloud explodes over the mountains. <laughs> it's like, hey, Brad, that dude. reminds me of one of my favorite earlier season episodes where Simpsons, Homer goes into a poos. I guess they're... Was that the one where they were in witness protection? No, I know. If if, um, if you're talking about buying the illegal fireworks at the one, it's the one. That's the one where they. Uh, I forget the title. They go to the Flanders summer house. That's it. And Homer goes in, and Apu happens to also have a summer house and runs the local Quickie Mart up there. I think it's another Apu type guy. You know, I thought it's, it was Apu. It, it's the same voice, but it's not technically Apu. Okay, because I thought he it, it said to him as Mr. Homer, because he, he, all I remember is Homer is trying to seem incognito, like, hi, I am a guy incognito, right, from another yeah. episode, and um, is buying, like, condoms and nudie mags and all this other stuff to seem discreet <laughs> and uh, not be noticed, just so he can buy fireworks. At the checkout at the end, celebrate the birth of your nation by blowing up a small chunk of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll always kill me. Yeah. Have you seen the, the reason why they had um, Aziz Ansari come on and be uh, the uh, the Apu's uh, nephew? No, that must have been great. Yeah, it was. He uh, he changed the... Uh, 
he changed the Quickie Mart into like a healthy millennial type type Quickie Mart. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah, it was that was pretty good. They they had a lot of lampshading jokes on the fact that Apu is not like the most sensitive. Uh, much Apu about something that one's called. Oh, I gotta see that one. And it, it's it's a lot of jokes about uh, how Apu, who is not voiced by an Indian, is voiced by Hank Azaria, is maybe not you know twenty you know twenty seven years after they came up with this character, no longer the most sensitive of uh, you know portrayal of a person from uh, that part of India. <laughs> so. Surprise, surprise! Yeah. Like they, your they nineteen eighty nine can... version of an Indian um, <laughs> quickie mart owner is. Not very sensitive. Yeah. Although, uh, not like as a fan. They I give think, his. They give him a lot of good character arcs. Though, they from, well, know. they do, and they take you know the fact that he is Hindu from India like dead seriously. Yes. You know, like it's all like super. They're they're super authentic about the faith and and stuff, and uh, it's it's interesting, especially considering that you know Hank Azaria is not Indian and didn't want to do that voice for the show. But they they couldn't think of another voice for a convenience store guy, and he did his Indian voice, and they, you know, pretty much said we have to use this. This is the, you do this too good. <laughs> and now he's Gargamel. Well, he, I don't think he is in the new one though. You don't think he he's not doing the voice in the uh, in the only difference is that Gargamel's a cartoon now Smurfs movie. Well, I think the whole cast is different now in the new Smurfs. Really. Yeah, it's like a whole other thing. It's like uh, it's got a new storyline. It's not related to the other movies. It's it's like just a that new... was the one thing the other movies had that was semi good going for it is that the animated bits actually looked okay. Yeah, this the... I think that's the best thing I could say. About yeah, this them. is just a Smurfs animated movie, and uh, the the premise for it is that they find the lost village of where all the other female Smurfs are. Well, either way, you can't erase the fact that Hank Azaria was Gargamel. He, he was Gargamel for two of the worst films. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, be, before before we close it off, The Simpsons is still The Simpsons. It's an institution. It will always be, like, like a, a great show. It's, I mean, it's part of a quarter of a century's worth of awesome. Yeah. So. What what is but like since the Simpsons is now sort of like in its own like the Simpsons is the elder statesman of itself like like the Simpsons is like the Undertaker in the WWE of like wrestlers where everyone's like yes this is the greatest guy who's ever wrestled he's amazing we're gonna cry like babies when he's gone but he's he's not the best guy in the actual company because he only wrestles once a fucking year yep. So, like, The Simpsons is sort of like that. So, on the pedestal, what what is The Simpson Like, what is the real inheritor to The Simpsons? Because there wasn't one for a long time. Like, yeah. it's, it's not Family Guy, right? It's definitely not Family Guy. And, um, and I'm, I'm not so sure Family Guy was ever reaching for that. Right, but it's it's definitely not that. Yeah. And it, uh, you know, King of the Hill, I mean, is also not on anymore. But, like, when it was on, I don't know if King of the Hill was, was really The Simpsons. No, it was something else. Yeah. King of the Hill. King of the Hill might as well not have been animated. Um, it was. It, King of the Hill was always at its best when it was more of a drama, which did, is weird yeah. considering it was a really funny show. Did, did but it, it? Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. You know, it, it kind of fell into you know uh, Roseanne type territory when that show was at its best. Yeah. Is kind of the way King of the Hill would get. That you was what, what I mean? that was what I was that that was where I was was going to take it was you know I think King of the Hill inherited Roseanne. Yeah, very much so. Like, like because um, like, did what, what was Roseanne still on and in like its shitty final season when no. uh, when King of the Hill first uh, debuted? No, I think Beavis and Butthead was still on MTV. Right, like right. in its original run when Roseanne ended. Yeah, yeah. Um, or very, or at least the Beavis and Butthead movie had just come out. When Roseanne. Mm. Now, does does it bug you that you can't get all of Beavis and Butthead on DVD, or do you agree with Mike Judge keeping the episodes that he now resents off of uh, off of DVD? I mean, or were you not aware of that? Cre- he is the creator, so I give him that. But yeah. at the same time, you made the content, put it out there. All right, because you know? uh, ha- had you heard that that that, that you can't? N- no, I. I this is the first I'm hearing of that. Yeah, this, this it's been a controversy for a long time because at one I knew point you couldn't get a lot of the music video segments. 
Yeah, well, the, because the, of the fact that MTV used to, you know, be a legit thing and yeah. didn't keep the rights to anything. Yeah, well, the the music videos were, uh, you know, were always an issue, and and a lot of those are just lost forever because they'll never get the rights on those back or whatnot. But like the 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 now complete collection of Beavis and Butthead that's on Blu-ray is it's as good as we're going to be allowed to get because a bunch of especially the first and second season. Mike Judge doesn't want anything to do with anymore because he, uh, remember when Beavis and Butthead first launched, like the, the Mark I version of that, they were very much the bad guys of their show. Yeah. You know, yes. I mean, and, um, you know, Mike Judge is no longer, I don't know if it's necessarily that he doesn't want this out there anymore or that he wants to not have that be the legacy is that a lot of the stuff where they were like abusing animals and they like, you know, beat people up and there was some, you know, some uncomfortable racial stuff in there. All yeah, I mean, all I, anytime you call, you want to tell someone that either never witnessed it or doesn't remember it being good, that Beavis and Butthead actually had some good introspective stuff and the inklings that became what was great about King of the Hill were in there. Yeah. You don't really cite Frog Baseball. Yeah, no, not Frog Baseball. You know? <laughs> or, or the one where they go to Mexico, or like, isn't there one where they rob a kid? Yeah, yeah, it got a little dark there. Yeah, and then they became like lovable goofballs by the uh, by the end of it. So I can, I mean, I could say, give the guy credit for trying to, you know, I mean, it, it, it it's not the same correlation, but, you know, it can fall into you know, Song of the South type territory, right? There's a reason why you can't get all of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right? This, zippity doo that. Yeah, and yeah. so, um, you know, yeah. for trying to remove from his background something that, you know, is no longer, uh, um, is, is no longer, I wouldn't say it was ever considered good, but whoops, I made a mistake, is, yeah. is you know, is an honorable trait, but at the same time, I mean, you did put it on the air. Exactly, exactly. It's kind of the, you know, the Sesame Street DVDs having to have a thing at the beginning reminding me that they're not children, even though they were made for children. Right, yeah. Um, breaks my brain just a little bit, but I'm happy that I have. Right. Um, so, Beavis and Butthead did not inherit The Simpsons. King of the Hill didn't. Family Guy definitely. Is it Bob's Burgers? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I think everything of that show, and there's, I'm sure this is going to be controversial, because I know there's people that fucking hate that show, Bob's Burgers really exists to me like The Simpsons did when I was younger. I don't know if, like, the 10 to, like, 15 crowd is as into it, though, as maybe we were. Maybe it's just that our generation needed... Bob's Burgers, right? Yeah. It's like at 33 years old, I can watch Bob's Burgers the way I watched The Simpsons when I was 12. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't I don't think that there is necessarily like an animated sitcom that is being as watched by adults as it is by young kids. I feel like it kind of well, like... Well, are there sitcoms at all that are? I mean, we're you know... leaving entire ones. I mean, we talk about Roseanne. Yeah. We talked about... Um, the Simpsons, the Cosby Show. I mean, our family watched Home Improvement every freaking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is there is there even something equivalent to that, where families where it's maybe a little bit older and edgy for the kids, but there's kids on the show so they can watch it. I mean, you and I shouldn't have been watching Married with Children when we watched it. Like oh, Married God, with Children no. is kind of like the it was like Family Guy, <laughs> you know, is now like back then. Um, at least for the level of edginess. It wasn't quite South Park, but y y you know what I mean. Um, but is there really anything like that that like a family would sit down on a Wednesday night and look forward to? Or has, you know, DVR just kind of ruined that in general? I, I feel like that that's Modern Family's thing, right? Yeah, okay, Modern Family. Yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right. I'm forgetting Modern Family. Well, cause, Modern you know, Family fits that bill. No, because you're right. I think that that's probably like the only one that like is it like you know ha like that that whole show it has usually four or five stories an episode and there's like an old an old couple story and people with a baby story and you know the teenage kids have a story. Well, right, because I mean, um, Fox had Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, and Malcolm in the Middle fit that category quite well. 
Right. Right. It, 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 you could say that maybe that that's a live action successor to something like The Simpsons, but it's still more King of the Hill, Home Improvement, Modern Family yeah. type of territory. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, and then you've got your Will and Graces and things like that, completely different category of show. Yeah. You know, um, but uh, I guess it's Bob's Burgers, but Bob's Burgers, I mean, it, it the first. The third episode, the second episode of Bob's Burgers is a Goonies reference, right? Yeah. You're you're not gonna, you're not gonna. I mean, I mean, Simpsons was referencing the freaking Omega Man, so. But you know, there's. I guess you're right. I, I really do think it's Bob's Burger. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think it hits the same generation. I don't think it does either. I I don't know if there are young young kids who are super into Bob. Maybe there is because there are whole episodes of Bob's Burgers that are only about Gene and uh, Tina in high school. I would love. I mean, I would like my kids to have those kids as a role model to look up to on a TV show because they're real. Yeah, they're as real as Lisa. I mean, Bart became real. Yeah, Bart was very, you know, Bart had the beefs and butthead first couple of seasons. Probably right? all the Bart stories were what everyone hated about the Simpsons. Right. You know what I mean? As as far as teachers and your parents were concerned, but it wasn't what the show was about. Anytime Bart was doing something bad, it was a really good story about Homer learning to be a better dad to help him, or right. Marge learning that you know she needs to be a little bit more like um, on top of things, you know, or or whatever it is. You yeah. know, there was always something else going on. Yeah. And I think Bob's Burgers abuse that perfectly. I, 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 I agree. I, You know what I think it might be that there isn't like a, you know, a kids watching quote unquote grown up shows thing now. I think it's kind of gone in the opposite direction where, you know, the, the, the story now is kid shows that have an adult audience. Agreed. You know, like uh, like maybe the modern inheritor to, to the Simpsons in terms of like the cross-generational thing is stuff like Steven Universe. Right, which I've never seen. It's, um, it's really cute. It's bizarre, but it's super cute. But it, Right, it, and I mean, I, I do find it funny that we went through this whole conversation without mentioning any of the Adult Swim shows, right? But they're, yeah. they're a completely different game. You know, right? Adult Swim, yeah. They fully imbue what I said about Bob's Burgers, which is why I think Bob's Burgers still fits the Simpsons mold a bit more. Yeah. Because I think children could like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I just, I don't have, I don't have anything to go off of right now to say that they do. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot of, you know, 12 year old kids watching reruns of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. You know, maybe Rick and Morty, they shouldn't be watching that, but maybe Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but that, it, it's a different level, right? Yeah. That's like that's like geeky TV show for geeky. That's like Invader Zim type stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? Um, Speaking but of I mean, which. Remember, I mean, is there even like an equivalent for kids to like the Rugrats and all that stuff now? Oh, yeah, no, Nickelodeon has, like, a whole thing, like, and again, like, you know, I'm talking like, oh, yeah, like, I'm an expert. I don't, no, I mean, I have, I have a daughter, and, you know, we watch, like, the stuff that Disney and stuff's putting out, but the things on Nickelodeon that I'm catching from afar seem to not, not really be in line to kind of bridge that up to, like, 12, 13, 14-year-old gap that maybe um, The Simpsons caught, you know what I mean? Not, not a lot. You know what's you know what's cute. This is and you know I'm sure the comments will tell me that I'm wrong, but it's one. There's a there's a thing on Cartoon Network called Gumball. Oh, I've heard of this. It's it's it's. I think you would you dig this just on animation because it's like eight different animation styles. Like a, some of them are hand drawn animated, some of them are CGI, some of them are stop motion puppets, some of them sounds are sounds like Wienerville. So it's very much that, but it's exactly the Simpsons sense of humor. It's it's a sitcom. Interesting. It's it's give give this a look because you you would like this. It's very uh, it, no, it's not even you know what it is. It's like Homestar Runner got a TV show. It's exactly that. Ah, uh, it's a, it's oh. a, it's exactly Homestar Runner the the show, which That's is why which is back. Homestar Runner is running on YouTube. Oh, they're so fucking good doing its thing still. Got yeah, it. you know what? We need to, we can have a whole podcast about Homestar Runner. That was college for me. Yeah. College for me was Homestar Runner. Damn right. And I guess it's back because, like, their their kids are old enough now they can do the show again? Well, I mean, I, I said this when I was watching the Lego Batman movie, but those the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, it's entirely that 
website sense of humor. It is. Maybe made for a little bit of a younger audience at times, but but man, it's the same sense of humor. It is. Uh, I mean, the bat, bat, Will Arnett's Batman is strong bad. Yeah. There's really there's really no way around. It. It, it, it's just it, 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 it's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, you're you know you're right. You're right. <laughs> but that that's a thing for another time. But, yeah. Uh, a show yeah, for no, I, I think I think the successor to The Simpsons in whatever nowadays world requires of a show like The Simpsons is Bob's Burgers, and it it came up like a sleeper. I mean, I didn't watch it till you showed it to me. Yeah, we were here one night. It was after the whole first season was on Netflix, and you were like, "You got to watch this." And me, me and my wife were hooked. Yeah. Hooked. Did, did oh, I, Bobby! Did we did we <laughs> did we drop out again? No, no, no. I just okay. I was just thinking about Homestar Runner still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we 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 should do we we yeah that that's that's a good topic for a future podcast is uh, internet nostalgia. Right. Yeah. yeah. Homestar. Weird that we can say that's a thing. Early Homestar Runner, old AOL stuff. Like, oh, dude, the antagonist. Oh God, antagonist incorporated. Right. <laughs> Bed, bedger, 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 bedger. Mushroom, mushroom. <laughs> right, yeah. See, there's. We people... can talk about um, Group X. Oh lord. Vinylblacksheep.com yeah. and Newgrounds <laughs> and Notcon. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> All right. Uh, and E Bombs World. Oh god. <laughs> And salad fingers. All right, all right. We we should we 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 should we should stay with this. If this gets any more into like early two thousands nostalgia, you know, you're gonna start singing less than Jake songs to me. Hey, you, you shut up about my favorite band. <laughs> you be quiet. I'm I'm I, they, I, they still tour. All right, fuckers. No, no wait, that, no, no. They still tour, but they still tour successfully, right? Very successfully. Are are they like are they like on like the like the Rick Springfield County Fair thing or are they doing like uh, like show no. dates? Show shows. Show shows. Okay, yeah. Well, see, I don't know. I don't. You know, it's it's like uh, like it seems like like bands that were legitimately huge in the nineties went well, to well that entire genre of music. No one listens to but me anymore. So well, yeah, it's fine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like hell. I mean, Blues Traveler is still around. Yeah, and the guys is he still really thin? I think so. Good on him. I think I think John Popper might have uh, might might have kept the weight off. Nice. But uh, yeah, no people. This is that's one of those things that people now say that they like. Hey, yeah, no, I went to this random rock show because I was on the road somewhere, and you wouldn't believe it, man. Blues Traveler was there. Speaking, you brought up less than Jake. I'm pretty sure my wife went and saw a show in the late '90s, early 2000s, where they opened for Snoop Dogg and Linkin Park and. <laughs> Porn. Wow! Think about that crowd. That is that is quite that a crowd. Was, that was just like the time where the Songus Arena and Lowell had Dashboard Confessional open for Mudvayne. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't seem right. Anyway, um, yeah. uh, like you said, we probably are going off in too many tangents, yeah. which brings me to a name idea. Yeah. We could call this the Chipman Brothers Tangent Cast. Because we never stay on topic. Yeah, I like the Chipman Brothers tangent. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, we, I, we might go yes. with that. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, it, just so long as we're not calling it like a ramble or a rant, because everyone uses those. A ramble or a powwow, if you oh, will. Oh, a, a shindig. A shindig. Yeah. A um. A I don't even. A moot. Uh, no, I got nothing. A moot. All of the, all of the cutesy little nerd names that they use a for a meat cute. Uh, hey, they're yeah. brothers. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so do we do we want to uh, call it a night and say uh, say good night to the nice I, people? I think we talked for much longer than we should have, but way less than we could have. So yeah, that's usually that's usually the case. No, Chris, thank you once again so much for uh, for joining us here. I hope the audio is better because I'm still not sure I had this microphone hooked up right. So I, th- I think we'll it's see. I think it's going to be better enough, and you know, eventually I will find a, a more appropriate way to uh, to create uh, to create these audio files. I'm sure now that I've mentioned that there's an issue like that with that, that someone will in the comments put like a thousand different uh, alternate ways to record Skype. So we'll see. Sounds good to me. All right, Chris, you have a good night. Hug the uh, the wife and the baby. I shall. All right, and uh, yeah, well, I'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. 
Have a good night. Oh, yeah.